What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is the recap for episode three of them called The Man with the Red Hair. The description is Don gets her first description of the killer and Edmund has a big audition. Now we know Don and McKinney, they've been running around trying to piece together whatever clues they have of who committed these murders, specifically with Miss Mott. That's where it all started. And we know that young Malcolm has been giving up information. Now, as far as Edmund goes, he's been working directly with Rhonda and she gave him a script and told him to come audition for it of a potential ex-murderer. And we also know that there's potentially a serial killer going around on the loose. Now, before we jump into this and we break down episode three, if you like them content, in-depth descriptions, in-depth breakdowns and recaps, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you don't see this at 100 likes, hit that like button. But let's jump into it. This is the recap of them, episode three. Starting the episode off, we see Don pulling up to work. Being that she's a detective, she has assigned parking. But when she gets there, there's a patrol car in her spot. Now, there's a white gentleman in the vehicle, and she tells him, hey, can you pull forward? You're blocking my spot. No response. She gets out the vehicle and goes and talks to him to pull rank. When she tells him to pull forward, his only response was black B and then he drove off and she's looking like, what the hell did he just say? You have to remember, this is right after the Rodney King beatings. So you can see where the tension is coming from. Don made a phone call to a journalist and was telling the journalist a little bit of information about the cases that they got going on, hinting that there might be a potential serial killer on the loose. Now, this article gets released and the only people that know about this or had that conversation was Lieutenant McKinney and Don. Well, protect and serve, LAPD turns a blind eye to another serial killer. Well, Don has to go answer to the Piper about this because this information wasn't supposed to get out because it's negative publicity going towards the police department. One thing about police officers, they're always going to look out for one another. So once Don gets to her desk, she starts seeing different type of evidence, photos, and it has her name on there on a toe tag. It has her name on the bulletin board. So she's looking around the office and everyone's acting very suspicious. We don't know who did this, but we know that someone is trying to mess with her head. Don has to go and talk to Lieutenant and he basically tells her, you went behind my back. You brought all this attention to the precinct and we did not want that. You were talking this serial killer nonsense. You're going to be the one to take this whole case. I'm not letting you off easy. So what he does is removes McKinney from this case and he puts Don Reeve on it specifically the number one detective so if there is a serial killer out there since you want to tell the media about this it's going to be up to Don so this is a lot of information that she's processing but now she gets what she wanted she wanted to be lead on this investigation and lieutenant he said all right this is what you get Don's mother Athena wrecked the vehicle in episode two her hands aren't where they need to be they shake a lot and that's why Don is very, very worrisome about her mother. But she has a box and she opened it up and there's a couple of dolls in there. Raggedy Andy dolls. This is the same doll that Edmund had in his drawer when he was listening to cartoons. Now, when she pulls this doll out, she starts to look around and things aren't very explainable. We're looking around and as a customer comes in, she looks down and her hand was on the chopping block of a paper cutter. So maybe this doll is some negative energy. With Detective Don being the lead detective on this case, she needs someone that's going to be loyal, someone she can trust. And that's where Officer Diaz comes into place. But before she brings him on, she has to vet him a little bit and ask him, how do you feel about a serial killer being on the loose? How do you feel about going to the media and making the community aware that there's a serial killer potentially on the loose? And Diaz says, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Now she has to ask the tough question. How would you feel if I told you I was the one that told the media about this quote unquote serial killer? And Diaz is like, listen, if the community doesn't speak out, then how are we ever going to stop anyone? This is going to be a reoccurring act unless people start voicing what's happening or what they see. So Diaz is now a part of Detective Reeves team. Now that we got our team assembled, Don and Diaz, Double D, hey, yo, pause. they start going over evidence and they're trying to figure out, okay, what was the MO? And they start thinking about all of the old 
serial killers. Okay, are the victims someone they know? Is this random? Why are they squeezing them up and putting them in small locations so they want us to see it? So now this has Don wondering, maybe they're doing this to these bodies, disconfiguring them like this and putting them in these small locations to give us a heads up because they want us to know about them. One thing about serial killers, they want people to acknowledge what they're doing. Edmund got fired from Chatter's last episode because he was walking around with that knife. But we've seen a little bit of joy coming from that situation, seeing how people reacted to him. Rhonda hits him up and she actually comes over. Now they're having a little bit of wine. They're just drinking, having a good old time, getting to know each other. She mentions after work that she goes out with co-workers. Edmund lies and says, I quit my job. I'm about to pursue acting 100%. We know he got fired. But now she does mention she goes out with the guy Donovan. And if you remember, Donovan is the cameraman, the one that was laughing at Edmund at his first audition. So when he hears this, he's like, you hang out with that guy? Give me a second. And we know Edmund is different. Well, he goes off to the restroom. When he goes to the bathroom, he goes and puts his stocking cap on. And when he comes out, He's in character. Remember, he's been practicing to be in this horror film. Now, Rhonda, she's scared. She doesn't know what's going on. He has a knife and he's talking about, I can't get this image out of my head. She's like, whoa, 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 Edmund, I have a kid. Remember little Kenny? I got to go home. He needs me. Well, he's in character and he didn't know if he would be able to fit the role. And out of nowhere, he takes his mask off. And he says, that was good. That was believable. Oh, man, I'm ready for this role. Now, he was taking this as getting in the character. Rhonda was like, no, this guy is weird, and she has to go right now. Don's at work late night, working overtime, trying to figure out what exactly she's looking for. Because at this point, there's really no leads. But she gets a random phone call. And on this phone call, it sounds like a young man saying, I have some information about the killer that's on the loose. Now, there is a killer called the Southside Stalker, but we don't know who he is either. Now, she's like, okay, if you have information about this, what's your name? He doesn't give a name. He just tells her, meet me tomorrow, 8 a.m. at my shop. The next morning, Don shows up to the shop. Now, all the lights off, there's mannequins in here, so it looks very, very suspicious. When she gets up front, it's a young man by the name of Victor. He's the one that put in the call. Now, he has issues with the police and his parents were immigrants. And he's like, listen, they don't want to deal with police anymore. And I don't want you to harass them. They've been here for over 20 years. But I do have some information if you allow me to tell you. Now, his parents do come out and we start to hear a little bit of the backstory of what actually happened to his younger sisters because they were also killed. They were unalive and the parents don't want anything to do with the police because they didn't help out the first time they showed up. Victor takes Don up to his sister's room. Now we're starting to notice similarities between all of the crime scenes. They all have anything that has a reflection on it covered up. The mirrors, windows, the TV. What Victor said his two sisters, they wanted to be into television. And they had some tapes up top. So they bring these tapes down and they start watching them. Now Victor said the two girls were very happy girls. But it eventually got to a point where they couldn't sleep separate from each other and they always felt like somebody was watching them. But he never understood what they meant. As he mentioned, they were acting funny saying someone was following them. They slept in the bed together. They didn't look in the mirrors. But then we see some footage of them recording outside of the window saying that there's a man with red hair staring at them. Now we can't see clearly, but they are looking out the window. And Victor said the day after that was recorded, the very next morning is when he found them enclosed in this glass display in the front of the store. So this is another case that is linked to the first two. After the incident with Rhonda, we start to see Edmund turn into a different type of person. He's watching Charles Manson on TV. He's listening to everything he's saying and he's repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. But we also see him taking that knife and starting to cut himself. Now, he's crying from the pain, but we also see him start to smirk a little bit as if this pain is actually joyous. And he's really starting to believe that he is this character for this role. 
McKinney has been taken off the case. McKinney has also been acting very weird, and he has something to do with the pictures that Don seen when she first came into work. Now, she's at work watching these videos, trying to see who the man with the red hair is, seeing if there's any clues in these videos that she can use. McKinney comes in and he starts harassing her, asking her if she born in the midnight oil, asking her why are you here so late? What does your son do while you're at work? Now, she's reaching for her stuff, her weapon, and she's like, I don't know what he's on, but I'm going to protect myself. He's talking about let's press the reset button, but we know we can't trust McKinney. He's already been acting funny, and he continues to harass her. He eventually leaves, but right when he leaves, the TV turns back on. Don's head hasn't been feeling right, so she ends up going to the doctor's office. They run some tests, but the doctor says there's nothing wrong with your tests. But he asks her, has there been anything in your family history? And she said her father passed away from a heart attack. So he prescribes her some pills to take, and it might just be stress from the case. But being that we know what this show is about, it could be that the guy with the red hair or whoever this quote unquote serial killer is, is either playing tricks on her. But she gets this medicine and it has her wondering what's the next step. McKinney has continued to act weird. Now he's already asked Don about her son and what does he do? He pulls up on him one day after school. Now the young man is walking home and Kale ain't got nothing to do with nobody. McKinney pulls up. And he asks him for his bag. And inside the bag, he finds some marijuana. Now he tells him, go ahead and get in the vehicle with me. But being that his mother is a police officer, he's asking the right questions. Am I under arrest? Did I do anything wrong? But McKinney is weird. He puts him in the vehicle, and then he locks the door. He's asking him all kinds of questions about his father. Does his mom know that he smokes marijuana? And then he ends up dropping him off at the house. But the doors are still locked. And once he unlocks the door... He tells him, tell your mother I said hello. But remember, he never gave a name. So he gets his bag. He runs into the house. And the first thing he does is take a hit of some marijuana because that stress is starting to pile up. It's time for the audition. And Edmund shows up with some overalls, some sleeve gloves, and the infamous mask with his face painted. Now Rhonda sees him and she runs off. She's about to tell everybody that there's a weirdo here. Now, when he comes in here, everyone is in the hallway waiting for their audition. He looks at one of the gentlemen. He gets a little nervous. Edmund sits down, takes his spot. Now, the casting director, they come out and they see Edmund and they tell him, hey, you need to leave. Uh, We're good. You can't read for this role. But Edmund, he's in character, full character, pushes him against the door. And then he barges his way in there for the audition. Rhonda tells him, hey, you need to leave. I called the police. They're trying to get him out of here. And, well, that role is going by the wayside. He doesn't even get to audition for it. He did all of this. Been cutting himself, listening to Charles Manson. Everything to try to get in character. Only to find out that everyone's looking at you a little bit weird and you have to get out of here. So he leaves. He goes outside. He's yelling at the top of his lungs because he put his all into this. He quit his job. Well, he got fired. And now he's about to sit in the vehicle for hours and hours and hours like he's done before. Don gets home and she finds out that her son is smoking marijuana. Now, of course, she's mad. But at the same time, she wants to know why is he doing it? Why is he rebellious? Well, they take him out to eat and she's just asking him questions. Why do you smoke so much? And He's like, I do it because I'm stressed. In that relationship between them two is good. We seen that his father showed up and he was only in town for a little bit. But after they leave this, this is where Don starts to lose it. On the way home from the diner, her son tells her exactly what happened. And he says, don't get mad, ma. But today, some police officer picked me up and he was asking all kinds of questions. It was kind of weird. Now, Don knows exactly who this is because we heard her son say, Ronald McDonald, kind of heavy set. She knew it was McKinney, and she's like, Did you get a badge number? Did you get anything? She's taking him directly to the house because she's about to go confront McKinney about this. She drops her son off. Her mom is trying, Hey, uh, Don. She's like, Mom, get out of here right now. I told the doctor about Pops, but I got something to do. She pulls up to McKinney's house, and now she's starting to think about all the times he was messing up on the job. When he stomped the old boy out. 
when he was tearing stuff up. And now she's smoking a cigarette watching him while he's drinking a beer. So she's plotting her very next move. But one thing we know about Don so far, she's very meticulous. And she's not going to give up until she accomplishes what she needs done. So McKinney, you got something coming. We just don't know what it is. All right, there you go to recap for episode three of them. Let me know what you think about Don. Is she about to apply that pressure to McKinney? And is Edmund ever going to be able to bounce back? This audition went horribly wrong. Rhonda definitely isn't going to call him back. She for sure isn't going to come over here and have no more dinner with him. But let us know what you think about Edmund and Don. I'm Old IJ. This is day three for eight episodes, eight days of them recaps. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. If I said something to make you think, or you just like them, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.